For decades, the Chinese leadership made no secret of their intention to unify Taiwan by force if necessary. The difference is in the past, they've never had the capacity to actually carry it out. We heard that 2027, 2025 could be the time that Taiwan could possibly face the invasion from China. And these kinds of warnings are really making Taipei officials more and more uneasy. Chinese President Xi Jinping has made unifying Taiwan with the mainland a key part of what he calls the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. 2027 is the year Xi Jinping could secure his fourth term in power, and is also when he aims to build a world-class military force. Beijing has rejected speculation it's moved up any timeline for invasion. <laughs> And some U.S. officials said the 2027 prediction is guesswork. But in Taiwan, the government has picked up the pace of strengthening its defenses. My understanding is that 2027 represents a capability shift in the sense that this is the year that the CCP may feel that they have the requisite levels of confidence to engage in such military action. Chinese capabilities have increased enormously over past years, so it's clear at this point that Taiwan cannot keep up in terms of spending the same amount of money that the Chinese are able to put in uh, the PLAs. There has been a transition here in Taiwan over past years to this idea of asymmetric defense. Asymmetric meaning that we're going to have defense capabilities that are mobile, that are survivable, that are nimble, and that are able to utilize our unique geographical advantages. We engage in politically difficult reforms of our reserves that have changed from four months to 12 months in terms of the conscription time. If a conflict scenario were to break out, local governments are actually extremely important. As we look at what's happening in Ukraine, I would say that local governments play an enormous role not only in organizing defense locally, but also to ensure that we have volunteers for police and other public safety duties. One of the big issues here in Taiwan is that many people just don't know what to do if um, a worst case scenario were to break out. How prepared is Taiwan for uh, increased pressure, at least, if not a war with China? Well, they're not prepared enough. I was in Taiwan last year, just before Speaker Pelosi's visit. As China's military strength and aggression towards Taiwan grows, the U.S. is increasingly concerned about the island's security. According to assessments leaked earlier this year, the Pentagon is especially worried about Taiwan's air defense capabilities. Chinese state-run media, such as CCTV, have run animations showing the Chinese PLA overwhelming Taiwan's defenses using airstrikes and missiles. But how realistic is an attack? China may have a strong military, but it's still an enormous gamble for it to engage in any kind of hot conflict over Taiwan. The US has signaled that it would be willing to step in and defend Taiwan, even though there is no formal defense treaty between Taiwan and the US, but only if China were to attack Taiwan unprovoked. For China, the best case scenario would be to issue a warning that's credible enough to induce Taiwan to capitulate without China ever having to fire a single shot. We have been living with uh, neighbors like this for decades. We are threatened every day. But the most challenge is information warfare. In uh, 2022 alone, Chinese fighter jets flew over into the ADIZ more than 1,700 times. The government departments were attacked by hacker 5.9 million times per day. We've seen a massive amount of disinformation released to play up China's military strengths, undermine Taiwan and create divisions among Taiwanese people and demoralize its army. But if China amplifies military threats, it risks driving away Taiwanese investments, which is still really critical for the Chinese economy, particularly in the technology sector. With just around 24 million people, Taiwan has an economy that's close to the world's top 20. 
It is home to some of the world's leading semiconductor companies, such as TSMC, which produces over 60% of the world's semiconductors used in everything from smartphones to computers and EVs. Predictions of future conflict have hurt Taiwan, as foreign investors began to pull back. But they've also hurt China. Taiwan is one of the mainland's biggest investors, and the companies have been looking elsewhere. New Taiwanese investment in China shrank by about 10% in the first quarter of 2023. By contrast, overseas investment excluding China climbed to 240% to 6.9 billion US dollars. We've also seen Wang Huning, China's number four top official, say that China still welcomes investment from Taiwan and it wants to better integrate Taiwanese companies into the Chinese economy. But there's already a shift in mood, not just reflected on the economic front, but also in the emergence of civil society schemes that are aimed at preparing Taiwan for potential military scenarios. We can never speak for China to tell you how will it happen and when will it happen. But we have been prepared for the worst. It's a whole life homework to do preparedness and education for the generation who never experienced a war. We're doing everything we can to avoid conflict by ensuring that we have the necessary defense capabilities, by ensuring we have international support. All of this is designed to forestall a 2027 scenario and push it back for years to come and perhaps indefinitely.